What's up, guys? Welcome to a uh, lore through of Dark Souls 2. I bought Scholar of the First Sin edition, and I've never played this before. So I've seen it played a bit, so I know you know some of the variations and whatnot. But <clears throat> I figured I would play this um, in order to um, kind of get the best Dark Souls 2 lore through experience, because I know that they changed quite a bit of things. Although some of it they I hear changed for the worse, so I guess we'll see. But without further ado, let's just jump right in. Perhaps you've seen it, maybe in a dream, a murky, forgotten land. A place where souls may mend your ailing mind. You will lose everything once branded. The symbol of the curse. An augur of darkness. Your past, your future, your very light. None will have meaning, and you won't even care. By then, you'll be something other than human. A thing that feeds on souls, a hollow. Long ago, in a walled-off land far to the north, a great king built a great kingdom. I believe they called it Drang Lake. Perhaps you're familiar. No, how could you be? But one day, you will stand before its decrepit gate without really knowing why. Like a moth drawn to a flame, your wings will burn in anguish, time after time. For that is your fate, the fate of the cursed.
<clears throat> That's weird. <laughs> All of the guys <laughs> spawned on top of me and it made it look like there was a texture issue. So let's just talk about a little bit of what we saw in the cinematic. Again, just like Dark Souls 1, we'll be going over this later um, as we you know, kind of unravel the game. But uh, unlike Dark Souls 1, it, you know, it doesn't seem like there's a ton of elements in this opening cinematic that will apply to the story of this game, um, but they more just give a context uh, for what we're doing. Dark Souls 2 is a lot more about setting a world, putting a world together than it is about telling a story. Um, it does have a story, it does have a direct story, um, and it does have a lot of sub-stories, but it really is about how the world is really falling apart again and about how people came to find themselves in Drang Lake and and really witnessing firsthand more than in Dark Souls 1 what it means to go hollow and so um, we were traveling um, and lost our mind uh, or became undead I guess uh, we're not quite hollow yet although we are unhuman, so our health is halved. And um, we collapsed on the ground, and then our memories started to fade, and then apparently we lost all form of our past, and we became someone new, just this undead entity. And we stumbled across a woman with a spindle, a uh, spinning thread, and she looks like these people that we're going to meet up here, the fire keepers, and she kind of sets me on this journey, which brings me to what is now Drang Lake, where we see the process of going undead and <clears throat> meeting her and transporting to this land, which is actually called Things Betwixt. In other words, this is an area kind of between the real world or that world out there and the world of Drang Lake which is kind of cut off similar to the way Lordran was um, but yeah so that's all we'll say at this point um, but let's look at stuff hemp hood that fully covers the face provides protection from the elements and little more the cursed souls who wander the lands have a strange way of ending up here as if drawn from afar by some force. <clears throat> and yeah, I mean, that's what it seemed to be for, that this woman was kind of guiding us, maybe guiding other people. Maybe there's a bunch of, you know, these types of people out there uh, guiding people. Traveler's tunic. Same description. Yep. So that's our main thing. Let's look at our uh, inventory. So we were branded, so we do have the dark sign, similar to Dark Souls 1. And a cursed mark. The dark sign induces death, returning the player to the last bonfire rested at, at the cost of all souls held. Do what you must to gather the pieces, scraping them into some semblance of a whole, before the will to do so fades. Um, just speaking about the hollowing process too, but also a gameplay mechanic that we need to save souls such with the black separation crystal again a symbol of farewells that has been passed down since time immemorial The crystal sends phantoms back to their homes or sends you back to yours Whether ending in hope or despair encounters are valuable experiences beware fickle use of this item And this time we have a bone of order restores the link to other worlds. You will be punished for fleeing from other worlds by disconnecting unjustly. However, this charm will disperse the ire directed at you, but sins are not easily buried, and there's no telling if you will be let off so easily next time. Each encounter in life is a precious turn of fate, and fate will not be cheated. So you only get one of these. I never use this, so I don't know if you only if you literally only get one use of it, because these don't say one, but you know, you can use them infinitely. 
but um, yeah, it's just, I, I guess there's other ways to kind of gain sin in this game, and I think in this game, it might show your sin, I'm not sure. All right, so there's this big kind of fissure here as if, like, you know, this were... Yeah, I forget, things are different here, so there's some dogs in here. I'm not sure if they attack you or not. Not really well equipped to actually fight them. But I know that there's, like, falconers here rather than the traditional dogs. Or maybe that's a uh, new game plus. <clears throat> um, but yeah, let's just uh, continue through here. Um, there does look like there are like some sort of like stone pillars, similar to the way the arch trees looked, and then we do have this house made out of a tree. We get a small, small, smooth, and silky stone. A smooth and silky stone. The shine of this stone is no ordinary polish and can only be achieved over a long period. Some in this land are in search of such stones. You can repair uh, HP with them, as you can do with a couple of items in the game. However, they're not viable for that. There's not enough of them to make that, you know, something that should be done. But we will get to see how they are made, and we will um, find a use for them uh, immediately. Looks like potentially the dogs, either bones for the dogs or dogs ma bones made from the dogs. <laughs> what seems to be the ruckus? Oh my, your face, the face of the curse. It's an undead. An undead has come to play. <laughs> they all end up here, all the ones like you. You spoke to that kind old dear, didn't you? You're finished. You'll go hollow. Yes, you will become one of them. Hollows prey upon men, feast upon their souls. This is the fate of the cursed. <laughs> <laughs> What is your name? All right. It's going to be lore through. I am sure of that. <laughs> At least you know your own name. Here's your reward for sharing. It's a human effigy. Take a closer look. Who do you think it's supposed to be? Think back deep into your past. Yes. It's an effigy of you.
All right. Well, now, so they said that you must have <clears throat> met that old deer in the forest who looks like them. So again, that's another thing, establishing that that wasn't just a thing or a abstraction or whatever. Like we real, we literally found someone in the woods and she directed us here. Um, that human effigy on it also had a uh, the bear, the dark sign, the bared curse. All right. Um, so I don't believe that there's any require. Oh, there is requirements. I guess I will be a sorcerer again so that I can get the requirements of uh, speaking to Carillion. Although I do like the explorer. Also, I can't remember if there's any requirement to speak to Lydia. I'm gonna go with Sorcerer. Uh, and we can get the Life Ring, Human Effigy, a bunch of healing stuff. It's cool, it shows it on the on the right. Huh. Homeward Bone, Seed of a Tree of Giants. Um, bonfire Ascetic, Petrified Something. Well, I'd love to read the Seed of a Tree of Giants. And I, do, I guess I could get invaded, and so... Um, I think you... There's a place to get the Seed of Tree of Giants, and if you get invaded, it grows, I think, on there. I'm not sure, though. Maybe it's just a time-based thing. But Petrified something I almost always go with. How do we... Ah. Alright. We'll do a man this time. Very slender. And we'll... So it says homeland, but it doesn't say... what homeland these are. So I'm gonna go with that one. And we gotta do this here. I mean, they're all great. There we go. Let's get a little beard in there. Very distinguished. And oops. I mean, let's do a yellow beard. All right. And then we can do all the stuff. I don't need to do any of that stuff. So let's finalize our creation. Yes, this is me. All people come here for the same reason. To break the curse. You're no different, I should think. Hmm, doesn't stand a chance. Well, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> through the door and trot along to the kingdom but remember hold on to your souls they're all that keep you from going hollow oh I'll fool you no longer you lose your souls all of them over and over again <laughs> I think we're going to need to turn down this uh, music a little bit. Um, so yeah, they said that we came here um, to 
to break the curse, which is, I guess, similar to what happened with uh, the original Dark Souls 2. It's just that we kind of came through to to be the, like, like the prophecy stated that the undead would replace Gwyn or whatever, but... Um, alright, well, let's talk to these ladies and see what they have to say. <laughs> mm -hmm. You must go on a journey without rest. Well, I suppose if you find yourself at an arm pass. But if your will is yet unbroken, then you may return here. To start again. With a clean slate. <laughs> yeah, so she's referring to the soul vessel item that we can come back and reset our state stats, which I might do, actually, uh, at some point, but we'll see. Now, go along, go along. All right. <laughs> do these... Do they just laugh at you? Okay, let's speak to this younger woman here. Doesn't look like them. She does have like, you know, a dress on that is clearly made by these people. Because it looks the same to these, like it has the same stitching. However, these people have robes. And she, and they're also, they look and are about the same age. Whereas she's much younger. This is a limbo. A link between Drang Lake and the outer world. Fair traveler, I know that you must have a story. Why else would you visit such a place? This lost, decayed kingdom. My name is Millibeth. The old women were once fire keepers. I am here to look after them. It is what my mother did, and her mother before her, and so on. So these are fire keepers. Which is interesting. Um, they all look the same, and in Dark Souls 1, none of the fire keepers look the same. Um... And uh, also, we know all fire keepers have deformities of some, in some regard. They can't see, they can't talk, they're hideously disfigured in some way. That could have been a coincidence in Dark Souls 1, but, or they could have, like, I don't know. They could be bow legged, I don't know. The old women were keepers of the fire. But now. The fire shows signs of fading. And the kingdom is beset by hollows. So we have a very similar situation to Dark Souls 1. However, the, the story is, a, I guess in a sense, it's much more complicated in terms of trying to discern motivations of people here and why like this is happening to the world at this time or whatnot. So as we get into the story, we'll, uh, we'll get more into that. The old women are sisters. I am told there was a fourth. Long ago, fire keepers were commonplace, but now they are lost, scattered to the winds. If they're not keeping a fire, are they fire keepers any longer? Uh, yeah, so we know there's a fourth one because we met her in the woods, so. The old women assisted, but now they. She's standing at a quite an awkward pose. So yeah, those are human effigies. Let us see what they say. 
A warm, soft, shadow-like effigy. Use this item to reverse hollowing. It also weakens the link to other worlds, preventing invasions. Peer closely at an effigy, and one begins to perceive a human form. But whose form it takes depends on the person who's looking. We also got a life gem. Small stone made up of crystallized souls gradually restore a small amount of HP, often found near abandoned corpses as if it were what remains of the soul. I mentioned this right away in Dark Souls 1 as the potential reason for um, you know, being able to kind of grab souls as an item, but uh, Dark Souls 2 takes care of that description. I mean, these aren't the same as those, of course. We still get the other ones. We'll read those descriptions then, but it does address this idea that there is a crystallization of souls. Uh, and let's read the press petrified something uh, that is pleasant to the touch. An unidentified petrified object, pleasant to the touch despite its looks. A rare and peculiar thing, to be certain, but one without a known purpose. Oops. Alright, now we get a dagger. Um, has only a modest attack and a short reach. With a powerful critical attack, this is a potent weapon. Alright. The first staff of most sorcerers, a catalyst for sorcerers and hexes. To use sorceries, attune, yeah. The strength of most sorceries is affected by the intelligence. And then we got the Black Hollow Mage Robe. Robe worn by hollow Drang Lake mages. Drang Lake mages worn different garb depending on their sex. What function this served, however, is unknown. As with many old practices, this is a woman's robe. But I'm a man. And then we just get imported trousers. So yeah, um... It says that the, you know, so like in Dark Souls 1, when you were a sorcerer, you came from Finheim, you came from outland, like from far away. But in this case, uh, Dragon Lake is, it has mages as part of it, um, I guess. So, interesting. All right. Um... There's like some things we can do here, but I'm just gonna come back to this area at a different time when I'm a little bit more powerful. Now, in Dark Souls, when you light a bonfire, that means that you'll you'll uh, spawn at it right then and there. Like I don't have to rest there, which is nice. We also don't have any Estes, which is interesting. Okay, we get our first soul and a torch. And more bones. Um, our torch appears kind of here. It's a weird item. They do it much better in later games, but it's right to the right of my pants. Um, I have five minutes of a torch, and I don't believe it's an item that we can look at. But let's look at what these souls say. Soul of the lost undead who has long gone hollow. The soul is the source of all life, and even in undeath or hollowing, the mind seeks souls. That's exactly what it said in the in the first game. So yeah, we could rest here, or now we can light this torch. I'll try my best to uh, use it here. Maybe we'll find... Oh! That one's already lit. All right, so let's go through the tutorial area. Oh, nice. So in this game, being a sorcerer, the you can upgrade your catalysts, you can uh, uh, lose durability on your catalysts, and it takes stamina to uh, cast spells, so it really rebalanced the whole um, I guess we can take this off
um, we can see uh, like a hippo um, enemy down there uh, again I'm gonna wait and come back um, at a different time to fight them uh, also these stones up here tell you what to do but you know I played this once or twice before all right and this is another dagger, I think. All right. I want to try to get all these. Hopefully we get more torches because I don't see how this one will last us. I guess we can put it away while we're not using it, but then we have to keep running back. Okay, and then we now find the crow's nest. Silky smooth. That's a little bit more straightforward than in uh, Dark Souls 1. Smooth, silky. Also, they take petrified something, but let's drop this. And we don't have to reload. We can just pick it up, and it becomes a magic stone. Oh, I guess we have this too. Yeah, doesn't say much. Um, magic stone. An altered state of Titanite. Used on the weapon to convert wielder's intelligence into attack. Cannot be used on shields. Sorcerers at the Melfian Magic Academy once attempted to imbue Titanite with various elements, but are said to have failed. Someone must have succeeded, though. What else would explain this stone? So yeah, this is kind of where I was I was interested to read those uh, my robes because Melfia is kind of the place where magic is taught and dealt with in this game. So, all right, and let us drop this, which gives us something better. I mean, these are all random, by the way, and this one is just gives you like the petrified somethings give you better items. So yeah, we got Twinkling from this. A form of Titanite with special power. What cosmic events could have created such a powerful class of Titanite? Alright. Um. Oh, there is a, uh, there is a thing to light over here. All right. Do you take a lot of damage from falling in this game, unfortunately, but they balance it. Um, like it's meant to, you're meant to use Healy items a lot more and stuff, so. All right. Might as well just light all these while we're here. Um, oh, there's now a petrified guy there. All right. My main thing that I wanted to do was uh, grab the ladder to get up to the silky. Oops. 
So yeah, the oops, <laughs> the um, combat is a lot quicker, or <laughs> well, quicker in Dark Souls One. Uh, it's a lot slower in this game, and um, many people hate that. I got the Amber Herb, which is a great improvement over Dark Souls One, or just a great addition. An annual herb with an amber color so deep it gives the impression of luminescence, restores a small number of spell uses. It is the mistaken belief of many that the flowers of this herb do not blossom. However, small white flowers do blossom during dusk when the moon is visible. So we know moon is attached to sorceries. Uh oh, that was close. Um... Yeah, I won't be able to do this whole area, so I might as well go light stuff when I have more torches and when I can uh, unpetrify that guy. Oh wow. See if I can get the parry timing. Or does this guy never attack you? Let's do a life gem here. open up doors quicker by rolling halfway through the animation. I love that. And here we have the cracked red eye orb. <sighs> Defeat the master to acquire a token of spite. The residual sins of those who have succumbed to dark temptations are contained in the form of the cracked red eye orb. I think there's, yeah, there's one more of these up here. Remind me when I get to that stage to, oh yeah, and one here. Ooh, there's a basilisk there. And there. I guess that makes sense. Um, basilisks appear next to people that are stone, petrified. So can we just not come here? Huh. Interesting. Again, this is my first time I've played um, the Scholar of the First Sin, so all of this stuff is new. And as we continue through the things we twixt and we enter into Drang Lake, we find Blinded by the Sunlight, Majula, which I quite like. Um, there's a few items around. We'll, you know, be gathering a bunch of stuff as we go on. And just right off the bat, a Divine Blessing. Which, you know, it's definitely the element that I think is inferior of this game to Dark Souls 1. Is that just like, that is such an important item and it's such a like, whatever. But let's see what it says. Holy water endowed with divine blessing. Cures status and fully restores HP. Water blessed by an ancient goddess. Her name long forgotten. And the Magic Academy of Malfia denies her even her existence. In any age, there are those who refuse to see reason. It is their meddling that distorts the truth. So, yeah, they're talking about Guinevere. All right, we come down this way and we get a few extra items. All right, so looks like a cleric was here. Maybe it was Petrus. A club fitter with a spiked head. The spikes of this blunt weapon cause bleeding. Normally wielded by clerics, but clearly intended to draw blood. 
Most clerics received this as their first chime for miracles and hexes. Uh, to use miracles, equip a sacred chime and attune a miracle at the bonfire. So, yeah, um, as I say, there's sorceries and there's um, miracles and there's also hexes now. Which So, sorceries is intelligence, uh, miracles is faith, hexes is both. And I won't... <laughs> Um, forget to pick this up on this playthrough. It is a weapon, quote unquote. Binoculars are used to peer at distant sites. Equip and place of weapons to use. A rare tool crafted in Vulgan. These won't help you in battle, but with a little creativity can be put to good use. You can aim with them, uh, I think is maybe what they mean. Now that's our first, we, that's the first time we've heard about Vulgan. And we'll learn more about what Vulgan is and why it's you know, a thing. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's let's just explore Majula, and then uh, then we can call it an episode. I do like how they show the name of each bonfire in the top here, unlike in Dark Souls One. Uh, so we can travel right away to any location from the beginning, which, you know, maybe that's good, maybe that's bad. We could tune spells, um, or we can burn items. We already read the human effigy, uh, but we could burn it, which wouldn't make any sense here. And then we have an item box right off the bat, which I like. I also like the um, GUI for it a lot better than Dark Souls 1 but I'll be making a lot of uses of this. First and foremost, let's go talk to the Emerald Herald, who is dressed similarly to the uh, um, fire keepers and things betwixt, I guess with the, with the robe or whatever, but let's see what she has to say. Are you the next monarch? Or merely a pawn of fate? Bearer of the curse, I will remain by your side till this frail hope shatters. Take this with you. May it ease your journey. So we get one us to Slask here. Go on and see the king. He who made Drangleg what it once was. He who peered at the essence of the soul. King Vendrick. Okay, so she starts out by saying, are you the next monarch? Um, and then she talks about a king of Drang Lake. Um, we can see the castle in the distance right there, which we kind of saw in the opening cutscene, but there's the remnants of what we have here in Drang Lake. Um, uh, but anyway, she um, asks if we're going to succeed King Vendrick, which is interesting. That's a similar plotline to Dark Souls 1. And he also, she also said that King Vendrick looked into the essence of the soul, uh, which is actually a very interesting topic, which we'll discuss as it comes up. And... Um, what else did she say? I don't remember, but it says that we can level up through her, which is a mechanic kind of reminiscent of Demon Souls, and they use it, of course, in Dark Souls 3 as well. Um, I don't know, I kind of prefer it to leveling up at the bonfire, but let's see what else she has to say. Bearer of the curse, seek misery. For misery will lead you to greater, stronger souls. You will never meet the king with a soul so frail and pallid. So yeah, we're going to be talking about King Vendrick a lot, because King Vendrick is the central character in this story, much like Gwyn. Um, and, but she also is implying that we cannot kind of get to him without um, more stronger souls. And she's also implying that she wants us to succeed him, or she's kind of sending people out on this journey hoping they succeed, so... We'll learn more about that, too. Seek those whose names are unutterable. 
The four endowed with immense souls. Their souls will serve as beacons. Once you have found them, return here to me. So that hope will not fade away. So... In this game, we have to go to four different places and get, fight the, the characters in this game that have the great souls. We need four of them. It's kind of like backwards of uh, Dark Souls 1. You know, people cl people loud um, Dark Souls 1 for being so non-linear, and it's true that you can certainly do a lot of stuff here, but what's really cool about this game is that when it starts out, Yes, there's a certain path you can take, but I mean, it's almost immediately open world, and you can choose any of the four paths to go down. Um, you know, probably best after Forest of Fallen Giants, but uh, it's it's just a it's a very open world game and can be customized the way you want to play it, which I think is cool. Bearer of the curse, seek souls, larger, more powerful souls. Seek the king. That is the only way. Lest this land swallow you whole, as it has so many others. Alright. So yeah, now we can level, we can upgrade our Estus, and we might as well talk. Over the hill and past the forest is the king's castle. Where a man peered straight into the essence of the soul. But whatever came of it, a lot came of it, actually. Those who come to Drang Lake seeking salvation soon lose hope and turn hollow. It happens to them all, sooner or later. That blue knight at the base of the tower, his spirit is already broken. Although he does offer sound advice. Perhaps he is a foreshadowing of your own future. That tiny thing inside the ruins. An ancient being that will mock your very existence. She imparts sound wisdom. Provided you find her on a good day. Uh, okay. I think she's... So, the first person she was telling about was the Crestfallen Warrior. I think that she was now just talking about the cat. I'm not sure, actually. The sign you bear will drain your very souls. And without souls, you will turn hollow. Stay strong. Do not lose hope. Even when you have precious little time. For when the undead dies, it is never truly dead. But only one step closer to hollowing. Not all undead are hollows, but all hollows were once undead. So yeah, she's just reaffirming the whole undead hollows thing if you hadn't played Dark Souls 1. This game is a really interesting mechanic, much to many people's banes, but, or it's the bane of many people, but when you're human, your life bar is full, and as you start dying, the the max amount of health lowers and it kind of symbolically shows what happens to those that hollow in a game mechanic way which it's very nice even though it might be a little bit annoying to play with it but the game is, is of course balanced around that mechanic so if you find an estus shard bring it to me so that i may ease your burden so this is kind of where i feel like the Estus Flask is one thing, and the more Estus Shards we give her, the more, like, you know, drinks we can get. And I'm thinking of it kind of like there's holes in the Estus Flask, it's so old, and we get a shard, and we put it into the, or she helps put it into the thing and makes it so I can fill it up more at the bonfire each time. That's kind of why I think that you only ever get one Estus Flask, no matter what game. This is kind of where I've gotten that idea. Better explained in Dark Souls 2 than Dark Souls 1. Over the hill and past the forest. Alright, we did this already. Okay. We'll come back to her and we'll be learning a lot of stuff. Unfortunately, we are now going to talk to the Crestfallen Merchant. 
or the Crestfallen Warrior, and he talks a lot. That shows how many times people have died in, in the game, which is cool. And then there was one on the back here, which in the first game said nothing. Yeah. But here's the base of the tower where we find this guy. You're undead, aren't you? You have that distinct scent, the smell of irreversible fate. This is Majula. It is a kind of settlement, a place where life is almost normal. And in Drang Lake these days, there are very few places like that. So it's the first mention of a scent. Uh, we'll talk about scents a lot in this game and smelling human and, and all that stuff uh, as we do in other From Software games. Um, but yeah, he's got a lot to say, so let's just try to get through it. I am Solden. And like you, I lost everything. And now I'm here. You probably heard that it was possible to break the curse here. Well, that's not true at all. There's nothing here for you, me, or anybody. Do you know much about souls? Even I'm not certain, but... I'm told that the soul is the essence of life itself. Anything living, sentient or no, supposedly has one. What we call the curse is traceable to the soul. Do you see what that means? To be alive, to walk this earth. That's the real curse, right there. We undead will never die and that's quite a predicament really yep souls and the curse and undead are linked inextricably so there are four beings in this land with giant souls and wherever you go from here you'll sooner or later come up against them each has a powerful soul, and a terrible curse. If that frightens you, then you ought to just give up right now. Like I have. <laughs> Do you ever cry out for help? The journey of an undead is long and treacherous. You'll face invaders from other worlds at every turn. If you need help, why not proclaim faith in the Blue Sentinels? When you face danger, the Blue Sentinels will come to your aid. Protection is yours, if you wish. You need only accept their kind embrace. So, Covenants is another thing that this game does really, really well. Um, there's a whole bunch of different types. Um, it's funny, he mentions the Blue Sentinels, which is a Covenant, but we're joining the Way of Blue Covenant, which is a Covenant that gets helped out by the Blue Sentinels. But I will join it, as I probably should join every Covenant I come across if I learn my lesson from the last game. That is a wise decision. People are weak, but the Blue Sentinels watch over us in their benevolence. Let the Sentinels cradle you in their embrace. Also, uh, by our life and stamina bar, it shows what covenant you're in, which I like as well. Um, better gooey for that. Do you feel lonely here? It suits me just fine, as I've nothing left anyway. It will grow on you, this place, 
give it some time. And we can learn the welcome gesture. And unfortunately, he still has more to say. Do you see the way beyond the bonfire? That will take you to the forest of the giants. There was once a great fort, but little of it remains. You may just find something there that will be of use on your journey. But don't venture too far inside, or you might not come back. The forest of fallen giants make me feel like giants were there and they were in a battle of some sort. Uh, we'll um, learn more about that for sure. Hade's Tower of Flame lies beyond the far gate. In the cathedral, the Apostles of Blue gather. But the road leading there is perilous. The gate is rigged with some contraption. But how it works, I just don't know. So we can actually see Hade behind us right there. This is just going to be a long episode. Have you seen that pit, that gaping hole in the earth? I don't know what it's like down below, but I wouldn't suggest trying to find out. Besides, you will never make it down there. Not without a ladder of some sort. Hmm. Well, we might have to get a ladder then. The flame you see there is a bonfire. They exist all across the land, beacons to we undead. If you are tired, try resting beside the flame. The flame heals us. Long ago, a woman called a fire keeper watched over each bonfire. She kept the flame lit and guarded it from those who would extinguish it. I wonder where the fire keepers went. He would have met them if he came here, but uh, there was many more than four, so. Did you notice any letters on the ground on the way here? These are messages that have jumped the fissures between worlds. In Drang Lake, the flow of time is convoluted. Things shift and waver, twist and turn. Poignant wishes, dashed dreams, the messages convey our very inner thoughts. If your will to soldier on falters, try leaving a message. Somebody out there is sure to listen. So, time is convoluted here as well. I guess I should say I haven't formally stated that the timeline here is that we are long, 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 <laughs> many years past um, from the original Dark Souls game. That we a lot of the items we speak will talk about things so old that we forgot the name of, which of course we'll know the names of. You may notice symbols that appear upon the ground. These are summon signatures. They call upon spirits from other worlds through the schisms in time. If you fear hollows, find summon signatures to call upon spirits to help you. And I think he's almost done. Do you see the way? Okay, good. That you, but hey, uh. the gate is. But how it works? Right. May you find peace on your journey. Salden. I will not remember that name. Probably. He's one I do not refer to by name. I just call him the Crestfallen Warrior. All right. I know this is gonna be a little bit longer episode, but we're just jumping in, so. This will be a good, just get this all out of the way. Who are you? Oh, it doesn't matter. Just help me open this door. I packed my tools in here, seeing it was vacant. But now somebody's gone and locked the door. Hmm. So, so 
someone is trying to someone has a key and it's trying to uh, I don't know cause some trouble or it just is like oh no one's using this I'm a blacksmith I'm nothing without my tools bring me that key chop chop will do I'm a blacksmith um we can see a uh, chest in there we can see his workbench. Uh, Dark Souls 2, like, again, it's really nice to have a, uh, a blacksmith right next to where you level up. It's just good that you go, you beat b b bosses and stuff, you come back, you level up all your gear and your stuff and you, and I just like it better. Of course, Dark Souls 1 has a bit, way better story and has better characters. I mean, I think Dark Souls 2 has probably the worst characters in the entire series, although some are interesting. Um, so as much praise as I'm going to give Dark Souls 2, just don't mistake that I, I do love Dark Souls 1, and I would say objectively it's probably I like it better um, than this one. Because it has atmosphere, it is it's really good gameplay. You know, I talked about it last time, but um, you know, there are just so many improvements in terms of you know just like you know mechanics and stuff that this one really worked on. All right, let's talk to this cat. Oh, I'm dead, are we? And one without much time remaining. Just about ready to fall apart, I'd say. Not exactly the time to be chatting with a cat. <laughs> well, suit yourself. Oh yes, you may call me Shalqua. Enchante. So, what did you want anyway? Ooh, you smell wonderful. <laughs> So Shalquar, sweet Shalquar, has a couple of interesting items. Again, she mentions that we smell good. All right, so Ring of the Evil Eye. We found this in the depths, uh, and it spoke of a beast that came and attacked Astora, I believe. A modest but inexplicably disturbing ring. Absorb HP. Peer too closely at the rare stone that forms the eye of this ring, and things that writhe and stir may come into focus. Silver ring depicting a leaping feline reduces damage from falling. Legend has it that when cats grow old, a force brews within them, and they are reborn as something new. I think this game has a lot of thematic similarities to cats. I think the reason that cats are in this game probably just lend to the thematic nature of of, of a lot of this game, but I think that that kind of the whole like cats have nine lives or whatever Which I know is not like a thing But as a symbol and it says right here as they grow old a force brews within them and they are reborn Obviously, that's what we do uh, ourselves as the undead Red eye a cursed string depicting a demon eye it becomes easier to be detected by enemies if it is tranquility that you seek, then you should never have left your home. If you seek strife, then fair enough, but no need to overdo it. I like how the ring's description itself is saying you shouldn't get the ring. A special ring that can be engraved with the name of a god becomes easier to connect the worlds of players who chose the same god. There are countless vestiges of long-lost gods in the ruins of Drang Lake, or perhaps they are the very same gods as ours only known by different names. There are a lot of gods in this game. A lot more mentioned than in uh, Dark Souls 1, for sure. Ring worn by Roy the Explorer. Hear the inner voices of surrounding foes. Useful for locating hidden enemies and perhaps for a few other things as well. So this is kind of similar, and this is why I thought, I guess, <coughs> I always thought the old witch's ring was really thin, but I guess it's because the Ring of Whispers is. It's used for a similar purpose, um, uh, so we'll be getting this one for sure. Alright, and then we have Homeward Bone, a white ashen bone, returned to last bonfire rested at. 
Bonfires burn on the bones of undead, and this bone, belonging to one whose journey was cut short, has the power to travel to bonfires as if it yearns to resume its futile quest. That's interesting. The description in Dark Souls 1 sort of implied that there was these special bones that were, like, linked to their, like, where the rest of their body was, and so they returned to the bonfire, but this kind of implies that because you always die and return to the bonfire, this bone, like, never finished its quest, and so it still returns to the bonfire. Interesting. Prism Stone, a slightly warm rock, emits a beautiful phasing aura of seven colors with a very rare eighth. The Prism Stone does nothing special, but if you feel you may lose your way, it can serve as a path marker. Alluring Skull, a skull of unknown ownership. Smashing it releases traces of souls which attract nearby foes. Does not work on all enemies, but can prove useful in unexpected ways. Lloyd's Talisman, talisman used by cleric knights. Block Estus recovery within a limited area. It is said that the cleric knights use these talismans to hunt down a cursed undead. Cleric knights fight with pride, and by blocking the recovering of the undead, they can also fight with impunity. Well, we know a lot more about Lloyd and Talisman and whatever, but this description seems more or less correct from what we know about it. Uh, we can leave our covenants with Shalquar. We can look at our rank in all the covenants that we join with Shalquar. And let's see what other... I don't think she talks as long as the other guy. This place is already dead. Everything will crumble and waste away so that something new may be born. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> this place is fascinating. We receive only the most peculiar visitors. Folk like yourself. It's enough to keep even a cat amused. <laughs> Are you going to see the old ones? Those four who have grown so incredibly ancient. They must have sprouted quite a thick coat of moss by now. For heaven's sake, no one even knows their names anymore. Imagine that. It's interesting that Shao Kuai... Yes. Nothing like yourself. For you have a most pleasant scent that grows nicer with each passing day. <laughs> it's interesting that Shao Kuai refers to them as the old ones. Um, yeah, the ones that have the four souls. Um, I suppose in this, in this timeline they're probably still considered ancient because people have not been able to defeat them but they do contain souls which are even more ancient which might make them in a sense more ancient themselves or perhaps these are the exact um you know people that you know we're talking about in dark souls one nito gwen uh isolith um and maybe the furtive pygmy. Um, well, you know, we'll talk about all this stuff as we come around, but the old ones is an interesting way to put it. Have you made friends with the man by the sea? Yes. He's lost everything. Absolutely everything. <laughs> the only thing he's good for now is a few tidbits on covenants. Covenants are a type of, well, contract, you might say. You give something to gain something. That's the way humans like it, right? It might be just the thing you need. But what does a cat know? <laughs> yeah, covenants are interesting in this game. Did you see that oddly formed rock behind here? No, not yet, but we will. Long ago, they called it Victor Stone, as I recall. If you wish to face greater challenges, speak to the rock. <laughs> Although, you'd just as well not. <laughs> we'll go look at that, and I'll talk about that in a second. This place is already... Everything will... Isn't... Nothing suited you, I presume. Not yet. Well, that's dismaying. 
<laughs> All right. That's gruesome. And we got our first this Estus flask shard. Uh, we also should read the Estus. A green glass bottle of unknown make. Fill it with Estus uh, at a bonfire. The nature of the link between the Estus flasks and the bonfires that illuminate the world of the undead is entirely unknown, but that is of little concern, for any undead knows the value of these precious flasks. The shard of an Estus flask. Shards are soaked, deeply soaked in Estus. Graft the shard to an Estus flask to increase flask uses. Over the ages, countless souls rested their bones as they drank from the original flask, and now the shard remains, serving as a vestige of their hopes and dreams. Uh, there's a bunch of pig, like little mini pigs over here. I don't know why. I'm. Yeah, you can see one there. I'm not going to go try to fight them because they're just too tanky for this stage. I think they're meant to punish players. We have this mansion here. It's locked. And uh, we have one more character to speak to and then we'll go end at Victor Stone. Uh, oh, oh, hello there. Welcome to my uh, shop. I'm Morlin and uh, well, I sell armor. Oh, sorry, I... Please do have a look at my wares. I could really use the business, if you'd be so kind. Um, yeah, so this Maudlin, the armor, and he, uh, he's a little bit of a nervous chap. I came from the west, from Volgan. Have you been there? It's a lively place, vibrant with trade. Very competitive, of course. And you have to grease the wheels to get anywhere. But I didn't have the funding for that, so I left home in hopes of striking gold. It's been years since then, and I've, <laughs> well, I've made very little headway. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm still here. Everything's all run down and dying. It's t terrible for business, really. So yeah, he's from Volgan. He tells us that Volgan is uh, kind of a center for trade and such, and there's so much competition that he had to leave and come here, although I would suspect that he, you know, is very close to hollowing, um, and he has for so he left to go find gold, and he doesn't know why he's ended up here. Uh, we'll see that as a theme of a lot of different people. A group calling themselves the Blue Sentinels have gained much power in Volgan. You can't even run a shop without their blessing. They claim to be working for the greater good, but oh, there's absolute hogwash. Uh, another great example of two different people contradicting each other. It's what I love about the series. <sighs> oh, by the gods, why the hell am I here? I think that's it. <sighs> yep. Oops. <sighs> Um, he has some stuff. I know this is a real long episode, but uh, it'll be good to get all this out of the way before we just charge into the rest of the game. Iron Parma. A small shield used made of iron. Lightweight despite its iron construction and sturdy despite its small size. Silver Eagle Kite Shield. Medium sized shield. Uh, commonly used standard shield has a point at top designed for ease of use while on horseback. Twin dragon great shield, a wooden great shield featuring twin dragons, quite light for the size of the shield. One required strength to handle a great shield, but they are very, they are very stable. In battle, one fights using shield bash instead of parry. Not my style. And then we have a standard helm. These don't have anything on them. Okay, I mean, this just says armor worn by Dranglink infantry. So, Dranglink had an infantry, um, which we'll learn more about. Falconer helm. Helm worn by the Volgan Falconers. Domestic Volgan soldiers are infamously t 
timid, so it is no wonder that this fierce band of mercenary falconers, falconers was hired to compensate. In practice, they serve as bodyguards for the affluent elite, and they serve well such that nobody dares scrutinize their background. Um, so yeah, we. I mean, it sounds like Maudlin, Maudlin is uh, very timid himself. It seems like that might be a culture in Vulcan. And also that the fact that he's holding and selling Falconer Helms might indicate that he was an affluent elite when he was originally traveling and he had bodyguards, um, which are now long gone, but that he has their equipment. And that, that, that would maybe indicate that Maulin was a, a domestic soldier as well. But yeah. Well I, I, well, I do hope I see you again. He's like, you know, almost pathetic, really. Uh, it does beg the question why the blacksmith doesn't set up in here. Um, there's plenty of things. I guess, like, you know, there's a hammer and there's these forges and everything here. I don't know. I guess he's just stubborn. I get a Titanite shard here. And some books up here, which is kind of interesting inside of a... Uh, uh, a forge or blacksmith shop, but um, let's see what the uh, what the shard says. Titanite shard used for re used to reinforce equipment to plus three. Titanite was discovered in an ancient layer of earth, and it's said to be a gift from the gods. Titanite of this size has very little power, but it's still a rare find. Yeah, so I mean, we know that the we found the. Um, the blacksmith deity gifted the titanite slabs that he found or created maybe I can't remember but um so yeah it says it was given by the gods and I guess that was the case um yeah so this is the rock up here um that Shalquar was talking about it's covered in a in like wood or something right now but um we won't be doing this, but this is a, a covenant called the, oh, what's it called? I can't remember, but um, I won't be doing it because it, it, it makes everything harder, like New Game Plus, and then it prevents you from uh, summoning. And I will need to summon for storylines, so I'm going to ignore it for this playthrough. And that's that. It's just another covenant, and it's kind of meant to be used if you know what you're doing at this point, not for beginners. Anyway, well, that is, at least for now, that is um, Majula. And, uh, you know, surprisingly, a lot learned and a lot of cool things uh, going on in here. And we have yet to even enter the world yet, so uh, we'll do that next episode. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll talk uh, another time. Thanks.